Tonight, we play in a wild underground 125 poker game in a confidential location in the middle of Missouri. This game is insane. We hit a full house in the first hand and face a massive overbet. Can we make a profit? Let's find out. Starting off the session with a bang, we're looking down at Jack 8 offsuit from the big blind. This is a 1 2 5 to come in game. So once the action gets to me, I decided we're going to go ahead and complete for five bucks after a bunch of callers and we're off to see a flop. That's where we start filming. Not a bad flop for us guys. We are flopping bottom two pair. I decide we're gonna go ahead and lead out once the action gets to me. I bet $15 and eventually we get two callers. So we've got some customers here flopping two pair. We're about to get this session off to a great start. Maybe not such a great start after all. When we see the turn come down, the king of diamonds. So we get counterfeit immediately. I decide we're gonna go ahead and bet out anyway when the action checks to us. I don't think we can get any value here, but I think we can pretend to have a king. I only get one caller this $20 bet, so we still feel like we're kind of live here. We've got a chance. We could end up taking this pot down. Not really sure what we want to see on the river. Hitting a full house though is kind of a weird feeling. Obviously, it's not the top full house. It's more like the bottom full house. I decide we're gonna check here and we get some really, really, really crazy news. Not a move you expect to see in live games very much. We see the overbet. We see a $200 wager from a young player. Pretty wild run out for my hand, obviously. It's very annoying. I don't really believe him in this spot. Overbetting with a king here though makes a lot of sense since I'm likely to have a king myself. I do think this player is capable of overbet bluffing, but I'm not 100% sure if that's true. I decided to go ahead and flip my hand over. I'm not looking at him though. I'm not really trying to get a reaction. Eventually though, I don't really think this is a spot where I can make the call. Super annoying to have a full house in our very first hand and we're gonna have to go ahead and make the lay down. Very annoying. Pretty sure we were right here. He doesn't show his hand, so I don't know, off to a rocky start. Hand number two, we're looking down at a nice suited ace here. We've got ace two of diamonds from the cutoff. We see a calling station player make it $15 to go. We decide against this specific player, we're just gonna flat call instead of three betting. I think that's okay against this guy and we are heads up to a flop. Pretty great flop coming down for us. We've got the nut flush drawn now. We see our opponent check, which is very surprising. I expected him to just go ahead and continuation bet here, but that's not what happens. Well, we're gonna go ahead and take the betting lead here. We're gonna bet out. I decide a sizing of $35 is pretty good. I expect this guy to call almost any amount I bet here. So we're not really gonna get him to fold. We're just hoping that we can hit our hand and build a nice pot. The turn comes down the three of hearts. Almost, we almost hit it, but we add a straight draw to the mix. He checks again, which I think is kind of surprising. Well, we're gonna go ahead and bet again. Maybe we can get him to fold. I don't know what he's gonna have at this point. Surely something like ace king here. We can just get him to lay it down unless he's got the king of diamonds, I guess. Although surely he would fold that too. I don't really know against this guy. Kind of expect him to call anything I do. I go ahead and bet out $65 and without thinking about it for a super long amount of time, he puts in the min raise. He clicks it back to $130 to go. Well. I've only got like $200 total here, so I don't really think we're gonna be doing anything except for putting it all in the middle. We're all in for that $200 total and our opponent very quickly makes the call. So we are off to see a river. Can we hit a draw one time? We're very confident any ace, any four, or any diamond that we're gonna win this hand. River comes down the two of hearts and we pretty quickly show our hand and see our opponent flip over some Pretty wild news. Our opponent has the seven three of diamonds. Yeah, so I don't know. I guess I should be re-raising in pre-flop, although I don't think he's gonna fold. So, oh well, gotta get back in the mix. Gotta rebuy here. Surely we can find some value against this player one of these days and make a bundle. Looking down at two black fives from middle position, we're in for $400 more. So in for 700 total, we've got 400 in front of us. There's a couple of limpers to me. I decide we're gonna open up to $20 here and we get two calls. This is where we hit the record button, off to see a flop, which comes down a great one for our range, but not a good one for our hand. We're gonna go ahead and bet on this flop. I think we should always be doing this here, like 100% of the time, especially on this flop. 
I decide we're going to go ahead and bet out $35, and we get some kind of annoying news when both of our opponents make the call. We were hoping we'd lose at least one opponent. We were really hoping we'd just take this thing down, but that is not what happens. We are off to see a turn now, which comes down the eight of clubs, so not our dream card, obviously, but we should still be in pretty good shape. I think I should bet again here, but I don't. I check, and we see all the other players, both other players, make the check also. So we're off to see a river, which comes down the eight of hearts. I decide we're going to check again here. We're going to try and play this as a check call maybe, depending on what we see. We get some very weird news when we see a very competent player from the cutoff bet out $70. I'm going well into the tank here. After my other opponent folds, I think there's a really reasonable chance that we could be in a bluff catching spot. I know our hand's not very good, but how often is this player going to call us with a weak ace preflop and on the flop? And how likely is he to be on a flush draw? I would think very likely in this spot. Turns out we are wrong though. I put in the $70 and he shows us ace four offsuit. So didn't really think that was a hand that he was gonna show up with here. Thought he would show up with a uh, flush draw a lot of the time, but that's not what we get. We try to make the hero call and it blows up in our face. So another loss this session, not going our way. Looking down at ace king of clubs here, we got a premium hand. I open up to $20 over a couple limpers. Hoping we can play a big pot. We've got a big hand. Now is the time. We're on, gonna be on the comeback trail, guys. We see everyone fold though. What is going on here? Why can't we get any action when we've got a big hand? When we've got a terrible hand like pocket fives, everybody's willing to get in there. Pretty annoying. Sucks to win a tiny pot with a huge hand. Oh well, surely our luck's gotta turn around soon. Looking down at Ace King again, this time it's the offsuit variety. I decide to open up to $35 over a $10 button straddle and we get some action. We get called by the under the gun player and the very loose player from the three deuce hand from the session before. We are out for revenge. Hopefully we can hit something. Come on dealer, one time, can we flop a hand here? No, we cannot. Flop comes down 10, eight, three. I don't think we can really represent this here three ways. I don't think we're gonna fake having a big overpair. I check and we see our other opponent shove all in for $110. Well. Nothing we're going to be able to do here. I really want to make the call, hoping he's got something miscellaneous. We don't have anything here, though. Eventually, after I see the other player in the hand fold, we just have to go ahead and lay this one down. Very annoying. We continue to run bad. This is not a fun session. All these premium hands have been letting us down. Time to try a non-premium hand. We've got seven five of clubs from the hijack. I decide we're gonna go ahead and call $15 pre-flop. Getting in there with everybody else. That's the way this game's been going. And we go a staggering seven ways to the flop. Flop comes down, jack, six, six with two clubs, so we're in business. We see a very loose player, the calling station-y type player, the player from the hand with seven, three, put out $55. I don't know that I really have enough money behind to be making this call, but surely I can hit a draw eventually, right guys? So we put in our $55 and we're off to see a turn once everybody else folds. So we're heads up now after being seven ways to the flop. Turn does not help us though. Turn comes down the three of diamonds. We get some interesting news though when my opponent decides to put in the check. Well, I'm just gonna check back here and take my free river card. And guess what guys? We brick it is the eight of hearts. He checks. I go ahead and basically surrender. I check it back and I've got seven, five, I've got seven high. He shows Jack of nine offsuit. So he takes this one down. Another loss, another missed draw. Yikes. Well guys, I'm not gonna lie. At this point in the night, we are pretty tilted. It's not that late. We haven't even been there that long and we are just getting wrecked. We can't hit anything. Nothing's going our way. When we've got big hands, we're not making any money. When we've got bad hands, we're not making any money. We are just losing. We look down at pocket jacks. We're gonna get it in here. We end up very easily getting it all in against the kid who maybe bluffed us or maybe just had our counterfeit full house in the first hand. We've got jacks. We're all in pre-flop. Let's see if we can hold up. Can we double up? Can we have some help? Can we have some hope in this session? Not the flop you wanna see when you've got pocket jacks. Pretty good turn. Can we get a 10? We cannot. We show our pocket jacks. He shows ace queen and we are out of here. This has been a session from hell. Well guys, that's the end of this session. You are not gonna see a cash out montage or a rack up montage or anything good like that. Terrible session. Don't feel like we played very good, but I feel like we are running pretty freaking bad. Hopefully the next one, we can bring you a win. The only thing keeping me making this vlog right now, I was really on the edge. I'm very upset about the edge. Not sure it's just one session. Why am I so upset about it? 
who knows? But my last video is doing incredible. Look at this. Look at this. This is wild. Thank you to everyone who watched. Every all the new subscribers, welcome to the group. We're gonna have another video coming out on Tuesday. We're gonna have some shorts coming out very soon. Gimli's excited. Look how excited this little face is. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. A lot of you have been hitting that subscribe button, so we appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up button. Leave us a comment down there below. Tell me whether you think this is a good idea, if we're gonna make it, or just telling me anything in general. I read and respond to all the comments, so I'll get back to you right away. Have a good one. See you on Tuesday with another video.